Hey, it's Rob. Going to be cooking today, and one of the things I want to try and make, I've never done this before, is ginger beer. It's a naturally fermented ginger beer, so there is no external carbonation to it. I've never done it before. Going to give it a shot. So the first thing that we need to do is make a ginger bug. Now the ginger bug is something that is used to start the fermentation process. It's going to take about three days in order to get it started fermenting. It's kind of like a sourdough starter for bread, but instead of bread it's for ginger ale. And we're going to get into that now. So a couple of the things that we're going to need. One is, of course, ginger. I managed to get this as a uh, whole pack from Costco. I love Costco. And sugar. And, of course, water. I'm using distilled water because the normal tap water here has chlorine in it, and the chlorine will kill this process. So we want to use some clean, uh, non-chlorinated water. Spring water can work if you can find it. Just make sure that there's no chlorine or any other chemicals in it. All right. First thing that we want to do is grate up some ginger. I'm going to use a food processor because I have one. You don't need it. You can just grate it normally or you can chop it up finely. But you want to make sure that the peels are on. I'm not entirely sure how much this is. I, the package was originally a pound, but I've used some of it. So this is probably, I don't know, somewhere around... Um, 10 to 12 ounces, I, I would guess. I could weigh it, I suppose, but you know, I, I'm just going to use this ginger because it's what I have. Now, I'm not going to use all of this to start the ginger bug, but I am going to grate it all. You want to keep the skin on when you do this grating, and there's a reason for that. We're going to use a natural yeast. You don't have to use uh, like a champagne yeast or a, or a beer yeast or anything like that. There's natural yeast already occurring on here, and it's more of a natural process, so I'm going to try it that way. Uh, this is a recipe I got from Joshua Wiseman. Uh, we'll have a link down below to uh, his video on this. Uh, really fantastic cooking show. Uh, but, you know, going to try it. There's quite a few others. I mean, this, is, this recipe is pretty forgiving a lot all the way around. So, going to go with that. together the ginger bug. What I've got here is a one pint jar. It's a wide mouth because this is, I don't know, you could use either one, but uh, I happen to have these and I think this is going to be easier to put them the uh, ingredients in. Starting with one cup. No, is it, wait, is it two cups? Uh, let me look at the... Two cups. Two cups of water. Two cups of water fills up a pint jar. Note to self, go get a quart jar. That's going to sit 24 hours, and then every 24 hours, add, again, two tablespoons of sugar and two tablespoons of the ground ginger. What that will do is that will help feed the ginger bug, and it will probably take three days, four days, in order for it to start fermenting. And when you start seeing the bubbles, it's ready to go. Now, the other thing to do before we put it aside is to add some cheesecloth over the top. This will help, uh, you know, real bugs from getting in, but still let it breathe enough so that the carbon dioxide can escape when it does start going. Other ways of doing this, you don't have to use the lid if you have a rubber band. You can put a rubber band over it. I just happen to have the lids and I don't have any rubber bands handy. So, you know, you do you. Another thing I'm going to do, this is for the uh, ginger ale part itself. I'm going to start this a little bit early. And this is where I depart from Joshua Wiseman's recipe a little bit. I'm going to take what's left of the gallon here.
I'm going to set that up to boil. I've set aside this to feed the ginger bug, so that's going to go. Uh, this is the amount of ginger I have left, and I have lemons. Now, I've seen a couple of recipes that call for putting the entire lemon in, skin and all. I don't know that I want to do that. I do want to try and zest some of the lemons because I've never tried zesting before, so I'm going to give that a shot and see if I can save some of the uh, save some of the zest and play with that. Never really used it before. I've heard it's pretty good, so I'm going to try and do that. You can watch if you want to. You can leave your friends behind.
This is the leftover pulp, and um, I've heard that this is still good for cooking, for like baking and cakes and things like that. To me, it's awfully stringy. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but I might, uh, I might actually run this through a second time in a different water bath and try and get some more of the flavor out. <sighs> I'm not sure yet. Otherwise, you know, it's got seeds and stuff in it. I'm not particularly enthused about that, but. We'll see. So I got the one gallon container of distilled water that is you know, now empty. And I'm going to try and pour this off. a gallon of the syrup. Yay! Right, it's uh, four, I don't know, four or five days later, I'm not sure which, but uh, the ginger bug is nicely uh, fermented and foamy. So this is ready to be put into the, the bottles. I've managed to take that little over a gallon and pour it into these three about as evenly as I could get. I'm going to top them up a little bit with some more distilled water that's been sitting at room temperature just to uh, sort of even them out. I want to leave a couple of inches of headroom on the top so fill to about there That's a bit much. A little more. So I'm going to seal these up, shake them up a little bit, make sure that they're all mixed pretty well. This is pretty concentrated. It's about, uh, I guess, it's more concentrated than um, I think I would like in a drink directly, but uh, we're going to go ahead because these are pretty much ready to uh, set to fermenting. It's a nice little pooch there. You can see the foam. Uh, come on, focus. Focus. There we go. You can see the foam that's in there. That's the carbon dioxide from the fermentation. So this is a nice active, uh, active bug. That's an interesting smell. Hmm. I mean, it's very definitely cinnamon and, or not cinnamon, but uh, ginger and lemon, but it's definitely changed. I'll put this back into here, because we're going to keep this going. Some active ginger bug. You don't need a lot. And this gets poured back. And to the butt, along with more distilled water. 
I'm going to add some sugar to that in a bit. Uh, but these, I'm going to squeeze until all the air, or most of the air, is out of the top. Because as these ferment, they're going to produce carbon dioxide and they will expand the bottles. So I want to get some of the air out now so that they have more room to expand. These will just sit for three to four days and we'll see how they look. And so a little while ago I decided to make some ginger beer and uh, according to the recipe it should have taken about three days. Well, three days passed and it was nowhere near anywhere close to actually fermenting. So I pretty much gave up on it and I've just let it sit. Um, well, it's fermented. These were uh, squeezed pretty tight and now they've expanded and they are pressurized. So I'm going to open one up and give it a taste and see if it's any good. It's been Oh, goodness. Not quite a month since I started this. So, about ten times as long as what the recipe called for, but we'll see what happens. I just wanted to show you how this settled at the bottom and the ones that are uh, ones that I didn't open. Uh, there's a lot of carbon dioxide that's trapped in here, and as soon as I open these, uh, it's going to start fizzing from down here, and all this is going to... Uh, well, potentially erupt <laughs> and it gets kind of messy so I'm going to do it over the sink or in the sink I suppose okay I'm going to go for the moment of truth Let's see just how uh, <coughs> pressurized this oh my well it's not too bad it didn't explode on me that's a good sign Starting to fuzz up. All right, let's pour some. Mm. Nice and fizzy. All right, dog hair. All right, we're gonna see how it tastes. It actually smells good. It's not bad. It's a little bitter. I think that's probably because of the uh, the outside of the or the lemons that I left on it. Probably if I was going to do this next time, I'd do it with just the lemon juice and not put the skins in at all. Yeah, it's not bad. Huh. It's not like. Uh, not like ginger beer that you'd find at the at the uh, store, but it's uh, it's not too bad. It's kind of refreshing. I like it. All right, so going from a failed experiment to one that actually seems to have succeeded. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to open up the rest of the the other two bottles for a while yet. I'll just keep to this one. I'll probably put the other two um, in the refrigerator or outside to slow down any more fermentation because they're. I think the fermentation is just about right at this point. It's a little bite to that, and that's the ginger, of course. Okay, well, hey, I, failure to success. I, I wasn't sure that this was going to work, but it apparently did. So, cool. See you next time. <laughs>